Hey guys, welcome back to Smooth Workshop. It's Terry here. Um, <clears throat> yet another unboxing. Yes, it is another vintage motorcycle kit. I will get on to my more modern kits at a later date, but I've been trying to collect the backlog, so this one's up next. This is the Moto Guzzi V10 Centauro. Um, it's Tamiya part number 14069. First released as a new tool in 1998, so it's a 19 year old kit. Now, it's very, very hard to get a hold of this one. I have seen it on eBay. Um, I've seen a couple in Italy and Australia. They're going for £40 plus. I have seen this model going for upwards of £80. I got it for about £22 off eBay. So. I was lucky to catch a, a good deal, but it's, again, vintage kit, very hard to get a hold of, and I'm just working my way through my stash, so this is one that I've got in my stash, I love Moto Guzzi's, I love Italian bikes, and it's just a classic V-twin, road going, motorbike. So, without further ado, going to the side box up. We have pictures of the bike, just in general, sort of graphic drawings of rough colours and uh, parts positionings. On the end, we have the Tamiya item 14069, uh, number 69 in the series. I do have a few bikes in between the ones that I've shot, but I've built them, so I can't do an inbox review. And a couple of different colour schemes. So yeah, um, yellow's not bad, the blue and sort of greenish, don't like, and the same again on this side. So yeah, the red and white is the one that I like, and the one that I'll be going into, so here we go with the unboxing. Okay, so in the box, Tommy instructions, typical black and white, wee bit of blurb about the bike. I'm not, again, I'm trying to cut down on the detail of all of this, but we're going into standard engine build, engine build, engine build, then you can build the frame, tyres, wheels, blah, 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 all the rest of it on, all the rest of it on, nothing looks out of the order of normal, but it does look like you can easily build and paint the engine and then go and do the frame and everything. So it's not like one of these ones where you build the engine, you've got to try and paint and clamp the frame around it. So it's a straightforward one. Um, no many needs to be said about the instructions. Okay, so in the box, there are a few sprues. There's a bag of bits, some clear parts and decals, a chrome sprue, a black sprue, and a silvery grey sprue, so it is what I would call one of their mid-of-the-range kits. So normally you would be expecting to pay around £28 to £35 pounds for one of these if, the, if Tammy had decided to re-release it. So I'm going to pull this down to the side and let you see what's in the box. There is some artwork of some of the older machines. Um and their part numbers, even a, oh, excuse me, a couple of cars, some more cars, I'm not really into the cars, you know, a couple of Formula One cars, and some other bikes around about the same genre. Okay, so that's an inside of the box. So, I'm going to start off by pulling up some of the sprues. Now, again, as per usual, Tamiya, all the bags are stapled. Now, as I say, I bought this off of eBay quite cheap, so I haven't actually even looked. Apart from seeing that the kit contents were complete, I haven't looked at any of the sprues. So I'm just taking these horrible, 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 horrible staples out. Now, the unfortunate thing about this kit, in my opinion, I'm just going to pull the camera in closer. Now, chrome parts do white out. There is absolutely nothing I can do about the fact that these parts are going to white out on you. Okay? The reflection and everything. It's terrible to get a hold of chrome parts and, and get a good video. I hate 
chrome. It's not actually chrome. Uh, time I use a vacuum forming process with actually use aluminium uh, type paints or whatever and through a vacuum process they put the chrome on the parts and I'm still trying to search for the best way of making chrome on a bike. Now there are a few things that are on this that you might want to keep the chrome on so I'm just going to Oops, I just dropped something on the floor there, don't worry about that. I'm looking at the box art here. It's a bit of a cruiser. So you've got chrome speedos, uh, chrome um, surround around the headlight, chrome forks, uh, stanchions, uh, looks like a chrome exhaust, and chrome mirrors. Okay, so bearing that in mind, I'm just having a little look at this, and I appreciate that this might glare out in the camera. Looking at some of the parts. The mirrors, we're never going to replicate that chrome, but unfortunately they're not undercut. So if you cut back on these parts, you're going to have a little nib, even when you dress them up, that will have no chrome on them. Um, the mirrors, even the mirrors. All right, okay. They are slightly undercut, so you will be able to put them in. I would advise not dechroming those. But I think pretty much the rest of it, apart from maybe speedo binnacles and the inside of the headlight and everything, you're going to have to take the chrome off the rest of them. You can't put two parts of an exhaust together and make it look like an oval exhaust part without a seam line down the middle. You have to remove the chrome, glue it together, address the seam line, and then paint it in a chrome-like paint. Similarly with the, the fork stanchions, the fork tubes, and the lower halves of the forks. It is a very, very nice chrome, but there's a seam line all the way down the middle. And a real fork doesn't have a seam line down the middle. Same again with the front pipes. I'm just having a look here. Actually, the front pipes are not bad, apart from a couple of things, although they are on the bottom. You could possibly keep the front pipes as chrome. Um, one of the, the cuts is a way where it goes into the exhaust manifold into the engine. The other one, unfortunately, is underneath. Now, providing you're not looking at the underneath, you could touch it up and get away with it. But, mm, no. So... And the fuel cap again. There's a lot of chrome on this. Some bits I would keep. But unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to be dipping and stripping most of this when I get to the kit. Um just try to see if there's any other details on the sprue. I'm not going to flash it in your eyes anymore, but there are chrome parts on this. You are most likely going to have to strip, apart from on a couple of parts, um, the chrome back off them and paint them up with the most appropriate chrome coloured paint that you can find. So, unfortunately, it's got a chrome sprue in it. Right, the next big sprue is a big black one. Again, staples. No point keeping going on about them. We all know about Tamiya staples. And it's a nice large sprue. And this is sprue B. And this appears to have, let's see if I can get this in the middle and bring the camera down a little bit. There we go. We have left and right main uh, frame parts, which luckily due to the build order on this, you can actually glue together and paint it all up before uh, screwing the engine into place. This looks like a rear seat pad. A uh, couple of side panels. This looks like the rear um, cowling. Not sure what these little tubes are here. Possibly exhaust related. You have uh, left um, handlebar grip and clutch lever. Right hand handlebar grip and brake lever with master cylinder. You have a front mudguard which looks thankfully to be in one piece so there'll be no seam line down the middle um this part looks like a rear number plate i'm just trying to adjust my camera here so it all comes into frame 
rear number plate and rear tail light holder. That looks either like a fender extender, which possibly goes on the back of this in a different colour. And looking at the picture, yeah, that could quite possibly be true. So the front mudguard looks to be in two parts. Um, rear foot hangers, um, gear lever linkage, the left and the right side of the main tank and side panel and rear cowling are in two parts. So you will have a seam line to address right up the middle of your tank. The seat, thankfully, is in one piece. So you won't have any seam lines to deal with with that. Um, this looks like another mudguard part, but that's probably the rear one. You've got a top and bottom folk yokes. And this looks like rear brake lever or gear lever. So that's another sprue, sprue B. Lovely, lovely detailed parts. Really, really crisp. It's almost like a a gunmetal colour, this, this sprue. Uh, all the ejector pin marks are on the back as per usual with Tamiya. Lovely and crisp. Absolutely no flash whatsoever on this. But you might have an odd seam line to take out on the frame and such like as uh, the sprues have a slight seam line on them. So down these parts on the frame, you might just have to do a little bit of sandage. Absolutely beautiful. Nice crisp detail where the logo goes in the tank. Yeah. And you can tell it's a slightly newer kit than some of the early ones I've reviewed. It is really, really nice detail. Okay, going into the final big sprue, and it is a big sprue on this one. Again, horrible staples. And I'll just pull this sprue out. Now, it's a V-twin. A horizontally opposed V-twin. So, this is sprue number A. Let's see if there's anything on the back. Not really telling you what it is. But we all know it's a Centauro. So, this is sprue number A. So, on sprue number A. Now, I'm just going to try and move my camera a little bit just to get this all in. Um, you have the rear shock absorber. Rear number plate. This looks like indicators here. Uh, cylinder heads for the left and right banks. Uh, this could be more indicators. Not sure. This has got a lot of spotlights and things on it, so that's probably really spotlights. Side stand. Left and right halves of the swing arm. Oil cooler. Side casing. The one half of the engine between the Vs. And the other half of the engine between the Vs. Not quite sure. Maybe a screen support, something like that. Again, not quite sure what that is. But it is a it does have pipe unions on it, so the pipes going there. This is because it's a shaft drive. This is a rear hub with a shaft drive input. Um rear wheel, front wheel, rear disc. There are two front discs on it. There is very, 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 very tiny detail on the outside of drilling marks. You would need an extremely small drill bit to drill through these. Whether it's worth doing, I don't know. Again, um, the outer disc is made of a mild steel and the inner is made of something else. So they put little rivets with small holes in them all around. And there is a little indentation in the middle, but again, it'd be a tiny, tiny, tiny little job bit to, to, to bring the detail out in that. Um, so you could draw the front disc, but you're going to need a really, really small micro drill. You've got the left and the right hand sides of the main engine casing and gearbox. There's your sump. Um, this looks like the um, drive shaft with the universal joints on. Uh, this looks like the injection or carburetors coming in. Um, cylinder bank sides on here and again more cylinder bank there, cylinder bank there so it looks like the two halves go together and another bit in the back um, very small cog there, it'd be interesting to know exactly what that's for that's for shaft drive casing left and right um, rear hangers other side of the drive shaft casing another gear hmm um, as I say, I don't, I don't tend to read the instructions before these. I'm a mechanic, so 
Yeah, so a lot of engine parts and battery and things like that all on this one big sprue. Again, fantastic detail on it, no flash, really crisp. All the ejector pin marks are on the rear. And yeah, actually looking forward to building this one. Really, really nice kit. Um, okay, so what else have we got? We have the usual bag of bits and bobs. So there are a couple of tires in there. They look realistically moulded. I'm not going to pull them out of the bag. There is uh, writing on the side denoting tyre size and manufacturer. There's a spring in there for the rear spring. There's some vinyl tubing there that will be for the oil cooler. The obligatory Tamiya screwdriver. Um, some screws and spacers. So yeah, that's a typical bag of Tamiya bits and bobs. So that's all present and correct. Uh, Thankfully, in the later kits, Tamiya did put the clear parts in a separate bag. The only thing is, they put a bloody staple in it. So make sure you take that out before taking them out. And there is very few decals on this. So, um, clear parts. I'll try and bring them up to you. All you have is a headlight, glass, rear brake light, glass, and four tiny little indicator lenses. Okay, so not much in the way of clear parts on this. And again, not much in the way of decals. Now let's see how close I can pull this in. Can I pull it in close, close? There we go, there's the decals. Rear number plate, either in the Moto Guzzi um, Centauro or a foreign plate. Um, speedo and rev counter couple of badges for side, very very few decals on this and it's a tiny tiny little sheet, they are Tamiya decals but even though they're the thick Tamiya decals you're not going to have any problem settling these in and that's the kit. So another quick and to the point review I hope, this is Terry from Smooth Workshop, hopefully I'll run out of vintage kits soon and you'll get to see some of the more modern kits that are available for you guys to buy normally and you'll actually go oh actually I like the look of that I'll buy that one but for now Terry from Smooth Workshop I hope you have enjoyed this little unboxing and inbox review and as always happy modelling bye <laughs>